Just to put into perspective uh, the fallout from crypto, at its peak, uh, the crypto asset ecosystem, all of it, I think there are more than 10,000 crypto assets. Most of them, or many of them, will not be worth much, but uh, there has been a lot of speculation. The entire crypto asset ecosystem hit somewhere between 2.9 and $3 trillion. It's now down to roughly $800 billion. Now, put that in context. Apple is a 2.3 trillion dollar company, one stock. So that just gives you a sense of how early we are still and how it, how unlikely it is that what has happened in crypto could cause a systemic financial crisis. Now, we probably are going to see more fallout uh, and we think we can dimension it. One of the ones rumored, not rumored, I think we have a lot of facts on this, DCG, Digital Currency Group, owns Genesis and and it may have borrowed roughly a billion dollars from Genesis. So a billion, it could be between one and two billion dollars. Now, to give you a sense of that, the Lehman Brothers' bankruptcy claims were 1.2 trillion dollars. So we're not talking anything like that. We are talking counterparty risk. Again, shades or echoes of that crisis. Reinforcing this idea is with transparency, you will have a much better understanding of counterparty risk. With decentralization, the counterparty risk should be lessened. Closed ecosystems are not a wise idea, and human-driven decisions, especially in a moment of a crisis, as opposed to smart contract automated de uh, decisions, also tend to be, if not irrational, then in the case of Sam Bankman-Fried and FTX, possibly fraudulent. ARK Invest CEO and contrarian investor Kathy Wood in her latest market update warns investors that she doesn't believe the fallout from the FTX blow up is completely finished yet with potentially more pain on the way. However, Kathy also explains that from what she has observed of Bitcoin and the crypto market in the wake of 2022 has only left her with high conviction in the asset class as it has been truly battle tested and come out on the other side. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video where Kathy explains why she thinks investors have got it completely wrong and are mispricing exponential growth and innovation and why she can envision a 30x coming by 2030. Also, only a small percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed. If you enjoy finance content, consider subscribing or liking the video. It's free and you can always change your mind. I think every time we go through a battle test of the crypto asset ecosystem, I feel better. I feel better. If you look at the trajectory of Bitcoin, um, while the swings are wild, as Jeremy Siegel said on our podcast yesterday, he doesn't think there has ever been an asset where more people have made so much money, even after these losses in such a short period of time, 12 to 13 years. So our conviction is as high as ever. And you will see from our Bitcoin monthly, which will be out on Monday, how there are on-chain analytics look even after this battle test. The outlook is positive based on on-chain analytics that show massive capitulation that we typically see only at bottoms. And that's why we're so impressed. We didn't get back down to 10 to 12,000. You know, a lot of the traders and hedge funds involved in crypto just look at the charts and press and press and press and press until they get what they want and get what they believe will happen. Well, that didn't happen. Now, I'm not saying it won't, but I think the odds have gone down quite dramatically. I'm truly impressed at the relative stability, especially in Bitcoin and, and Ether to some extent. So with that, I'd like to end on one subject, and that is the profitability associated with with disruptive innovation. Now, many of you know that the pundits out there, whether they're in the media or in our own business, have characterized what ARC does as profitless tech and concept capital or tech wreck and have equated what we're doing to what happened during the tech and telecom bubble and the bust. In fact, our strategies have behaved worse than during the bust, even though so many companies went bankrupt, so many companies that should not have existed back then, went bankrupt in the NASDAQ. They had gotten into the NASDAQ and they went bankrupt. 
and yet the price decline in the NASDAQ back then is not, was not as severe as our own price declines, at least for some of our portfolios. It makes no sense because the seeds for what is happening today in innovation were all planted during the 20 years that ended in the tech and telecom bubble and then, and then the bust. There was too much capital chasing too few opportunities too soon. And that's why there were so many bankruptcies. Now, we do not believe that's the case. We are ready for prime time. And you can, you can t take a look at our research for many examples of that. And so what we encourage our companies to do now that we are ready for prime time is to invest aggressively right now, capitalize on some of the most important investment opportunities of our lifetime, of the last, uh, really ever, really ever. We believe that the market cap associated with truly disruptive innovation transformative innovation will go from 7 trillion now less than 10% of the global equity market cap to 210 trillion in the next 8 to 10 years uh, that's a 30 fold increase that's exponential growth and um, i think the a reason a lot of people have trouble with our strategy is we've grown up in a world of linear linear growth. And the last time many investors heard those, the phrase exponential growth was in the tech and telecom bubble. And there's a lot of muscle memory associated with that. Many of those managers became value managers. Uh, I know, and I hear them denigrate our strategy, perhaps because of their experience. We've been doing the real research uh, on disruptive innovation. And according to Wright's law, and according to all the learning curves, cost declines, and so forth, we are ready for prime time in the five areas around which we have centered our research and investing. Multiomics, so what we used to call the genomic revolution, uh, robotics, energy storage, artificial intelligence, and blockchain technology. The technologies are ready. We didn't even get the cloud until 2006. We didn't have the big uh, breakthrough in deep learning until 2012. We didn't get the cost of DNA sequencing down to $500 per whole human genome until this year. So uh, we're ready for prime time now. So we're, we've just uh, finished one holiday and we're going into another series of holidays during the next few months. So of course we wish you a wonderful holiday season, but just let me leave you with one thought and hope. This is the hope. And based on our research, uh, I think this is really possible. So if you look back to the last time we had multiple innovation platforms evolving at the same time, telephone, electricity, and the automobile in in the early 1900s. What you found is we were at a period very similar to where we where we have been very recently. There was a pandemic, the Spanish flu. There was a war, World War I. Now, both of those were much more serious than what we've experienced this go around. We, we are an echo of that. Inflation hit 24% in June of 2020. And by June of 2021, it was down to minus 15%. And now as Jeremy Siegel reminded me, we're on the gold standard then. So they needed to try and get prices back to where they were before the, the pandemic and war. But the echo here is money growth is falling just like it was then. So we believe that the drama there, that 24% to minus 15% in inflation from 20 to 21, that we will see something uh, akin to that, an echo of that this time around. So we got to eight, depending on the measure, eight to 10% inflation here in the United States. Europe's at 10% right now. And we would not be surprised uh, and agree with Jeremy Siegel that we could slice through 2% at some point next year. Commodity prices are already pointing in that direction. Massive discounts over Christmas because of overwhelming inventories are pointing in that direction. And uh, so I'll just say one last thing. When, I, when we first moved to St. Petersburg, it was about a year ago. Ago. And I remember walking out around the park to go take a walk. And I ran into a woman named Cheryl. I think her name was Cheryl. Could have been Shirley. She was on her bike. She had a little dog. She she recognized me and ARC, knew all about ARC, read our research. And I think, and, and she pulled up her app with, you know, our portfolios. And again, about a year ago, and this is as tough a year as... I've ever had. This is worse than 0809 by far. And I, I think of her every day and I think of all of our clients every day. And, uh, I know, I know that 
patience will win out. And, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if uh, Cheryl uh, is still in our funds, but know that I take these things very seriously. But I also know that we cannot pivot from our style. Style drift in our business is suicide. And our focus is exclusively on disruptive innovation. We would not hedge with energy stocks. The energy index is at an all-time high, despite oil prices falling from 130 to 80. That makes no sense. But we're seeing a lot of people drift, even even if they have ESG mandates. So we will not drift. And we know that our research is pointing us in the right direction. If anything, in the last year, our conviction in our research has increased because the artificial intelligence breakthroughs that we were expecting five years from now, maybe even 10 years from now, GPT-3 chat, just or chat GPT-3. It's mind-blowing. So I I think truth will win out. Patience will, will win. And uh, we're looking forward to more in the know videos, sharing our insights and thoughts in the new year, by which time at some point we expect the pivot to have taken place.